Hello everyone, Blackbelly Thousand One here. Today I have a uh, video by request on how I set up my intercom system. I believe I've actually had multiple requests, but someone here recently actually requested that I make a video on how I set it up. So uh, today I'm going to do just that. Now, the intercom video I made, the uh, actual intercom in it. It, um, that, that was, that's long gone. I don't have that set up anymore. But I do have a way that I can make another one here. Very easily. So, uh, of course I have a plain old rotary phone. This isn't modified at all. It just has a standard RJ11, uh, jack on it here. And I have, this is the main board out of a General Electric 1999 um, just you know standard desk phone type thing it's modified a little bit here you'll see uh, what I mean by that in a minute here but um, really that's all you need you need some wire maybe a soldering iron um, a jack of sorts um, any jack really will do whatever whatever fits your setup because you're probably you're gonna need a stereo for this as well and you know that stereo you or the stereo you're using really depends or no sorry the jack you're using really depends on the stereo that you uh, plan to use you also need a nine volt battery and optionally uh, two alligator clips. So, um, sorry. Going to start with the main board here. I'll show you how it's modified. So, um, when you get this out of a telephone, first off, the keypad might be connected through ribbon cables. I cut the keypad off because I don't need to use it. I mean, this is just the receiving end of the intercom. So, um, you want to start, there'll be, uh, there'll be the handset connector, which is floating around somewhere, not, um, not this one with the two wires coming out of it, this is from the phone jack here, so, um, this is where the handset cord was, which is green and red, I believe, yes, green and red, comes out of the board here, and along with a black and yellow pair which is a microphone they all go to a special jack for um, for uh, what do you call it for the ha handset oh my goodness <laughs> so yeah so that's that you just put a wire here this is the obviously the output to a stereo system and um, the really the big modifi uh, modification you need to make is is the uh, the telephone jack and you need to cut this the red wire specifically this red wire here in half and strip both ends of it very carefully not um, to damage or pull the wire out of the jack or off the board here so once you've done that you gotta solder, solder this on, or the wires that are there, strip them, put a wire or jack or something on it. Once you've done all the modifications to the main board that are required, we can go ahead and connect up the power and 
and some other things. So, in between these two red wires here is where you need your power to go. 9 volt battery is the best solution. Any battery, really, that is, you know, has a, can withstand a, a decent amount of um, current flow. And, um, something that is 3 to 9 volts, basically. So you could use a lantern battery even if you wanted. That would work. Just use a battery because you don't want to use something that could possibly have AC, admit AC into the uh, main board here because uh, it won't sound very good. All you'll hear is a, a buzz over your speakers. So I recommend using 9 volt no matter what because it just works. All right. So once you connect up the power, doesn't matter the polarity, just connect it to both w uh, red wires, one to the um, this side of the jack, that, and then another to the actual main board, into the main board. So what you can do now is simply take the wire from the the other telephone, just plug it in. This one uh, has the clip busted off. But right now, before you even hook it up to a stereo, you should be able to pick up the handset and maybe hear a bit of a... If you listen closely, you might hear a bit of a, a, a very faint hiss. So I can hear a very faint hiss, and if you talk, you should be able to hear yourself in the earpiece up here. So... Make sure you got a good connection on uh, these these uh, terminals here. Very important. Um, so just adjust mine a little bit because I noticed there's a little bit of scratchiness. So, all right, this uh, yeah, that's better. All right. So basically, you're all set. What you got to do now is plug this into a stereo and ooh, something messed up here this main board has actually been a bit of a problem the other problem here also may be my alligator clips are flaky but um, a good connection is very important as I uh, I can't stress it enough because if you don't have a good connection it definitely has intermittent audio quality, so uh, I gotta strip my wire a little bit here. Ooh, got a little bit of a, a feeling from that. Fuzzy feeling. <laughs> Not in a good way. Alright. Also, be careful working around this stuff because normal phone line voltages are like 100 volts or something. So. You gotta be careful with that because these capacitors could still be ch very well be charged with um, telephone line voltage, and you really don't want to get a shock from that. Though it may be lo low current, it will definitely be discomforting at the least. All right, there we go. Now I got a better uh, get better contact here. So, and then we got that all uh, up. Let me just do a test here again. All right, sounds pretty good. I don't think it'll conk out. So another good test to do too is uh, if you if you can't um, if you can't tell whether this is actually working or not before you even hook it up to a stereo, dial. Dialing will work. So I can hear the pulses, and if you have a touch tone phone, it will work. So, now the next step is to go ahead and plug this in to a stereo system. Testing one, two. This is a test. Attention, Walmart shoppers. Our store will be closing in five minutes. Please take your items to the front counter. Thank you.